Buildings require lateral force resisting elements to stand tall and be safe even when subjected to extreme lateral forces. These forces can be winds, hurricanes or typhoons and earthquakes. Buildings located in various parts of the world will have different exposure to each type of lateral load, which is prescribed in each city or country's codes and standards. There are a few types of lateral force resisting systems available for engineers to choose from. The most common ones used in low-rise, mid-rise and high-rise buildings are concrete shear walls, steel bracings, moment frames or a combination of these. Engineers choose a lateral system based on many factors, such as architectural requirements, how tall the building is, the magnitude of lateral forces, and many others. Shear walls are solid reinforced concrete elements that can accommodate openings for doors, windows, pipes, or ducts. Separate pieces of shear walls close to each other can be coupled together using link beams or coupling beams, which will result in a stiffer lateral system. Steel braces come in many different forms, such as cross, diagonal, V, inverted V, and others. Both concrete shear wall and steel bracing systems block open spaces to some extent, but providing relatively high stiffnesses. Moment frames, which rely on rigid connections between beams and columns, do not block spaces, but require larger beam and column sizes, more expensive connections, and provide less stiffness compared to the other two systems. This is a sample floor system and as you can see each floor is supported by columns and walls which transfer down the gravity loads axially. Gravity loads from each story are cumulative as they get transferred down to the foundation. Now let's idealize a building as a vertical cantilever that is fixed at the ground and each story's mass and gravity load are shown as individual circles. We can also show some lateral loads as forces that apply to each story. These loads can be wind pressure or seismic forces. Under lateral loading, not only the building will sway, but it will also be subjected to shears and overturning moments throughout the height and into the lateral force resisting elements on each floor. These forces for a simple constant load at each story will look like this. And for a triangular distribution, it will be something like this. So the lower we go, the more shears and moments we would expect in the lateral elements. And this is the main reason for larger bracings at the lower levels and when combined with the axial forces from the gravity loads, the thicker shear walls as well. Once the lateral loads have already been transferred to the lateral force resisting elements in the floor, it will be transferred down to the foundation system. So let's talk about some of the critical items related to the lateral design that engineers will look for in the process. Floor system. As an example, we have a floor that is made of reinforced concrete. When wind pressure is applied on the perimeter of this building, it will travel through the floor system or diaphragm, as the structural engineers call it, to reach the lateral resisting membranes connected to the floor, so it can travel down to the foundation system and eventually to the ground. This is called the load path and buildings should have a well-defined and designed load path for lateral loads that may come from any direction. Now let's assume that we have a concrete floor slab with a large opening. This opening will disturb the load path for a portion of the applied lateral load, since forces close to this region have to travel around the opening to get to the lateral system. Also engineers try to avoid having openings close to the lateral resisting elements, so loads can get into these elements with no disruption. Lateral deformations Buildings lateral system should be designed and sized in a way that inter-story drifts or relative displacements between every two adjacent floors are smaller than a certain limit, so that non-structural elements such as claddings, partitions and other components do not experience a high deformation which can cause them to crack or break apart. If deformations are found to be high, Sizing up the lateral force resisting members or adding additional lateral elements will help. Axial, shear and moment forces. 
One other major requirement is the ability of lateral force resisting elements to safely carry the lateral shear and moments to the foundation system without getting overstressed while having reasonable section sizes. To make things more complicated, lateral shear and moments are combined with axial loads mainly induced by the gravity system. It should also be noted that engineers will consider multiple load combinations with various load factors in their design. These combinations can be dead load only, dead and live loads, gravity and wind, gravity and seismic, among others, and the members should be designed for the combinations that produce the most adverse effects. There is something related to add here. There are cases where gravity loads in the building are not adequate to cancel tensional forces generated by the lateral loads overturning moments. As a result, some portions of the lateral system may go into net tension, which is not an ideal scenario. Torsional effects The location of the lateral force resisting system is particularly important to avoid creating large torsions in the building. For example, if we have a core wall which is positioned at the corner of the floor plan and this building is subjected to lateral loads as shown, these loads, while traveling to the core wall, will create high torsional moments in the lateral system and will probably cause large deformations at the corners of the building as well. This effect can be reduced by having multiple lateral elements at opposite corners of the floor plan or by moving the core wall closer to the center of the floor. However, even if the lateral system placement is perfect, since the applied lateral loads come from various directions with varying magnitude, there will still be some degrees of torsional effects. Lateral accelerations High lateral accelerations can make occupants feel uneasy or even motion sick when strong winds blow. Therefore, it is important to make sure that the lateral accelerations in buildings are checked and are within the acceptable ranges. Using of dampers is one of the solutions that engineers can look at in case of high accelerations. Foundation system All gravity and lateral loads will eventually reach the foundation system which may consist of an individual footing for each member to a more complicated raft foundation with piles. Foundation systems must be designed in a way that they can safely transfer the building loads to the ground without overstressing the soil while having reasonable short-term and long-term settlements. A poorly designed foundation can cause buildings to tilt or even become unstable and collapse. If the lateral elements experience net tension at the base, the tension will be transferred to the foundation system and it can create uplift which is when a portion of the foundation is being lifted off the ground. In this case, engineers may try to use a heavier foundation structure or add tension resisting piles or caissons. Well, now that you are familiar with some of the important aspects of building design, let's talk about the role of computer tools in the whole process. Engineers use many different computer programs in almost all stages of a building design. They first build the analytical model which consists of all necessary gravity and lateral elements with preliminary sizes. Then they will assign the restraints at the base of the building and add the applicable loads and load combinations followed by other steps. They will then run the model as engineers call it which is when the program creates a representative mathematical model of the building and solves it against the applied loads to get the deformations, base reactions and elements internal forces. Engineers then verify the outputs by looking for inconsistencies in the results and repeat the modeling, analysis and design stages until the results are consistent with their engineering judgment and expectations. Once satisfied with the design results, engineers will then proceed to the drawing production stage. There is something important to add here. While computers automate parts of the building analysis and design process and save engineers days or weeks, they are entirely relying on user inputs which can sometimes be erroneous and hence the famous term of garbage in garbage out is still true to this date. Well, that was it for this video and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next video, have a great day or night.